Hey everyone, it's Mike with It's Pittsfield Tonight. I'm gonna jump right into it. And I'm gonna start with, well, most of what I'm gonna talk about in this video we've been talking about, but these are ongoing topics that are gonna to continue to be di discussed in the city. But uh, the first thing I wanna talk about is the Berkshire Flyer. So I know many of you saw that um, this year we're getting the Berkshire Flyer, which is the train uh, that will come from New York to Pittsfield and then Pittsfield to New York. So it'll be, leaves New York City on Friday, coming to Pittsfield, and then it heads back Sunday from Pittsfield to New York City. So, great to bring New York City people here. Um, not so great if you wanna do something on the weekend, <laughs> like go to New York City, if you live here. So this is really just to bring people here. What they're gonna do when they get here, I don't know. I guess they're gonna use e-scooters. So we're gonna talk about that too. So anyway, that was a little bit of a letdown uh, for some people, but I don't know, hopefully that works. Again, not trying to be negative. If that's the best they could come up with and that's how they're gonna pilot this. Uh, but I think they would have the, the traffic the other way around. That would have been awesome for people if that was an option too. So anyways, body cams. That's something that we're still discussing we are finally seeing some of our local politicians come out and speak. Um, and it, you know, I've said this, I went back and I looked at a video talking about this from 16 months ago, a video I put out where I said, God, I hope we don't wait for a tragedy before we get to that. And we did, and now they're all speaking out. Uh, this has been discussed for a long time, but Chief Wynn has come out and he says he's in favor of body cameras too, but he has some concerns over the laws in Massachusetts and some other things. There was an article in the Eagle about that. I, I did not read it. Um, but here's the thing. I, I just, I feel like we have to get body cameras. Uh, the biggest expense to it from what I understand is the storage, the data storage. I mean, that's a lot of video storage. So. Um, I was told that that can be pretty expensive, but I, I think that's a cost regardless of expense. It seems like a necessary one. So, I don't know. We're going to continue on that. Everyone's still waiting for the DA's conclusion to her investigation and see where we're at with that. I'm glad some of the city councilors are speaking up on this. Usually they only talk about like bike lanes and how wonderful Mayor Tyre is and e-scooters. So that brings us into e-scooters. Now that's been a topic in Pittsfield because a company named Bird brought in these rental e-scooters. Now, again, I'm not trying to be negative, but there were concerns from people in the beginning because if you look at the national reviews for them, uh, a lot of communities, it has not worked because what happens is these things end up everywhere. They get dumped in rivers, parks, people's porches, driveways, sidewalks, uh, and it becomes a, a nuisance. Kids using them for what they're not intended for. They're supposed to be, this is why they're great at like college campuses and big cities, beach towns, things like that, where people use them to commute. You're not going to see that here. You're going to see, I think, some kids wanting to have some fun. Uh, and that's not what they're intended for, though. They're not meant to be, like, jumping off things. And just, so anyway, we'll see how that works out. But So Ricardo Morales, the head of DPW, is going to give us a, a demonstration and a speak and dis, on this and discussing these bird e-scooters. And, you know, look, again, I could care less if this company wants to come in here and put these bird e-scooters. If it works, it works. Great. If it doesn't, it doesn't get rid of it as long as it's not a nuisance to the city. Why are, Ricardo Morales, okay, nice guy, talked to him a couple times. He though, you look where his mindset is at, rather than being head of DPW, the guy should be head of like recreation and parks and activities or something like that. His heart is, that's where his heart is. He really, his passion is these bike lanes and e-scooters. When I heard him talking about traffic in the city, he compared the United States, or he, he talked about the European model, how roads are better in Europe, and he's one of those people. That's his mindset. And 
I don't know if that works for DPW with what we have. I really don't. Because you look at our infrastructure, it is the worst many of us have ever seen. There are roads, I'm telling you, I can't believe we're going to have the head of DPW giving us a little speech on bird e-scooters tomorrow when look at Tamarack Road. Two more cars yesterday I watched get towed out of there. I'm going to go down and film it again. It is unbelievable. I'm not exaggerating. No warning signs, no nothing. It is unbelievable. I almost watched a truck, pickup truck with a uh, trailer with a lawnmower on the back, and it looked like he had just had this one little lawnmower on that trailer. And oh my God, man, I'm telling you, I thought that trailer was going to flip all over. And the guy was doing 10 or less. If you've driven down it, why don't Ricardo take the bird e-scooter tomorrow for his presentation and do it on Tamarack Road? We should do it there. And I know there's many other roads that are horrible, and I've seemed to harp on that one. But that's, for me, it's a daily commute, unless I have to go all the way around, and which is a pain, because look at how much gas costs. It's just a shame, though, but I have to do that now. Uh, I cannot afford the, the damage, any more damage to what's left of my vehicle. So, I don't get it, but we're going to, you know, these e-scooter things are the talk of the town. They've taken priority. Bike lanes and e-scooters with our politicians have taken priority over infrastructure. And look at our parks, look at our roads, look at all the things, and it's due to lack of maintenance. I have people messaging me about the causeway that uh, are incredibly upset about that. You have Karen Kalinowski, one of our at-large city councilors involved in that. She wants that closed down that that's a safety hazard uh, or safety issue. Uh, unbelievable. But we're going to talk about e-scooters. And some of our politicians will finally speak up on, on the situation with body cams because we're going to wait for a tragedy. And then you're going to have them pointing the finger for, I guess, some kind of political gain maybe. There's, there's no one, look, we have to get past this. But what happened was horrible, and we something positive has to come out of that so it never happens again. That can't ever happen again. Not in our community. There has to be a better way. And I'm, yes, I'm referring to the shooting of Miguel Estrella. I, I, that sucks. You know, I was 22. And here, look, here's, and I'm not... I'm not making a stance on this at all. I wasn't there. I don't know what happened. But this is what, there's a situation that I thought of when I first heard of that shooting. And I think of it all the time when you hear this stuff. When I was young, uh, this was in Florida. I was at a party one night at someone's house. Hundreds of people. Uh, and one of our friends, big dude, and I won't mention him by name because I'm still friends with him today. Big guy. So, nicest guy in the world that everybody liked, but, the, you know, the, the biggest guy in the room kind of deal. And about an hour or two into that party, all of a sudden, he started flipping. I heard people yelling and screaming. So, I run, I was in the kitchen hanging out with some people there. I run into this, to the next room, the living room where he was, and dude's flipping the couch over, throwing it into a wall. There was people running. He punched somebody in the face completely out of character for him. I'm like, what is going on? I thought it was a joke at first. I tried going over and talking to him. He hit me. Uh, and he looked at me with this rage in his face. I didn't know what was going on. Uh, he only had like, somebody we asked, he only had like three or four beers. Nobody was really sure what was happening. So anyway, they had to call the police. I had no choice but to call the police. He was out of it. We thought someone get, slipped him drugs. We didn't know what was happening. So the cops get there, and, and in Florida, it's the sheriff's department. The sheriff's department gets there, and they're yelling at him. He's not listening. He runs right at this female deputy. And luckily, the deputy behind him that he didn't see or there, I guess he ran right by him, came at him and tackled him, uh, and then they tased him. It turned out, okay, when all was said and done, he had diabetes and did not know it. 
He was an undiagnosed diabetic. And those three to four beers he had that night, on top of years of not knowing this was going on, something happened. His blood sugar, something went so out of whack with him, uh, he went cuckoo. It was the craziest thing I had ever seen. And, and that is what it ended up being. Because after they tased him, he was unconscious. He went out of there in an ambulance. And we all thought someone gave him drugs. My point is, he remembered none of that. None of it. And it was completely out of character for him. And I think all the time, if that cop hadn't tackled, that cop could have easily pulled out his gun and shot him and would have been justified in doing so because he was running at his partner and he was a big guy. Uh, I think about that. So, you know, that's, there has to be a better way. There has to be a better way. And that's going to be a legislative thing. You can't go after a police department for that. Police officers are trained this way. They're doing what they were trained to do. They're doing, working within the, the only system they know. That system has to change. And the only way that system can change is from a legislative point of view. It's who you're voting for on a, on a state and, and, federal level, and in some cases, many communities that want to do away with civil service, then it would be who you're voting for for mayor and city council. That would, that would mean a lot. But it's really, it's, it's changing the laws, changing policing, looking at things differently. And we're at a new era where I think it just has to happen. Everything evolves and that has to evolve. Um, anyway, I just felt like sharing that story because I've, I've, I think some people don't understand when some people are saying, you know, I've heard different point of views on that whole situation, of course. But I'm, that from my personal experience and, and knowing that that guy that I told in this, that I talked about in the story, my friend, he, was, he is the sweetest human being you'll ever meet in your life. And in that moment, that wasn't him. And that could have been the end of his life. And it would have been such a shame. And that's where I think people have to understand this loss. It doesn't mean that the tragedy didn't happen. Everything didn't happen the way it happened. And we have to find out what the investigation says, too, when all is said and done. But it shouldn't, those situations shouldn't end it that way. There's got to be a better way. So um, that's it for now. One thing I want to mention real briefly is the skate park. I saw a post on Facebook. The skate park uh, near PHS, every day the city has to go in there and there's so much trash, it's disgusting. Why won't, those, why won't people pick up after themselves? You know, we rarely get something nice and when we do, people trash it. We gotta start taking care of our stuff. I, 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 there's got to be a way to get through. I don't know. Let's get some volunteers to make some giant signs or something. Pick up your stuff. I mean, what is so, I mean, when I saw the picture of how much trash you're talking, it's a good probably hour or two hours worth of work, maybe, for, for these guys to go in there and clean that whole mess up like that. When all these kids have to do is put it in the garbage cans. There should be some kind of rules on there that you have to. And somebody should be monitoring it. All right, that's it for now. I had to mention that. Uh, so there's a lot to talk about. I got a lot coming up. Uh, like I said, I've got interviews coming up with Desheen Moore for the Beat the Streets basketball tournament. Uh, some city councilors coming on. Uh, Charles Chronic, our Ward 2 counselor. Karen Kalinowski, our, one of our at-large counselors. And of course, the district attorney's race. Um, I'm hoping to get Bobby Sullivan and Tim Chagru back on soon and Andrea Harrington, our district attorney. Um, I'm hoping to get her on the end of May, beginning of June. So that's it for now. Everyone stay safe. Um, I'm wearing these hats until I chop it off. If that happens, I think it's gonna. Uh, but stay safe, take care of each other, and I'll catch you all in the next day or two.